Hello. Uh, if you're watching this, you've made it through basically the end of the very uh, the end of the semester. And so I want to commend you for that. And if you're watching this, that means you're probably getting ready to take the final. Uh, and this video is designed to uh, be as concise as possible and as helpful as possible. Now, if you're hoping I give you every single answer, that's not the case, but I do want to give you some helpful hi uh, hints and helpful tips that maybe can help you as you prepare to take this last final. Now, uh, to start, what I want to do is I want to give you kind of a breakdown of what the final is going to look like. So the final is only 16 questions, okay? Uh, you do have to do the whole 16 questions in one sitting. So you want to make sure you are ready to take it. I, you shouldn't start taking it if you're going to have to leave in 15 minutes or you have practice in 20 minutes. Make sure you have um, a good amount of time. Um, some of you, the test may take, I don't know, 30 minutes, um, maybe less. Some of you, it may take an hour or more. It just kind of depends on how fast you work and how um, easily you can find uh, the information or that you can recall the information. So. The first point is make sure you have enough time to take the test because if you exit out of the test, that's it. It gets turned in. You get one opportunity to take the test, so make sure you have enough time to sit down and do it. The second thing, you can use your book. Where did I get most of the information on the test? This book right here, right? Our textbook for the semester, Our Faith Called Christianity. Make sure you have this before you sit down to take the test. You can use this book. Uh, you can use your class notes. Um, those are really the two areas of, of where I've gotten every single question on the test is either things we've talked about in class or things that come directly out of your reading that you have to do each week. Now, when it comes to this book, I want to even pull out the exact chapters you're going to need. So if you have your book with you or you want to write these down, these are the chapters that you want to be looking at. So that way you're not flipping through the entire book trying to find answers. I'm going to give you the specific chapters where some of the questions came out of. All right, the first chapter you want to take note of is chapter six on the sacraments. Now we talked a lot about the sacraments in class, but this chapter here also goes into depth about the sacraments. So chapter six, the next chapter is chapter 10 on eschatology. Um, eschatology is the study of end times and what we what Christians believe about the end of the world and, and, and things along those lines. So, so that's chapter, chapter 10. Chapter 11 on denominations. Chapter uh, 14 on biblical interpretation. And then finally, chapter 15 on church history. All right, so there's not very many chapters, but I'm going to go over those one more time. So if you, you want to write these down, you have chapter 6, the sacraments. Chapter 10 on eschatology, chapter 11 on denominations, chapter 14 on biblical interpretation, and chapter 15 on church history. All right, so make sure you have this book and those chapters ready as you take this test. Now, for the format of the test, I actually have the test pulled up here that I can kind of run through this. Now, it's going to be set up very similar to how your midterm was. So the first part is going to be matching again. Um, and you, this time, you're going to have to match a description with the, either the correct key term or the key person. All right? If you remember, since Module 4, so Module 5, Module 6, and Module 7, uh, Module uh, 5 and 6, we had key terms. And then Module 7, we had some key people. Okay, and so you're going to have to look at those descriptions and best match what goes with uh, each one. Okay, and just a note, it says this on the test, but just a reminder, there are four answers that won't be used. They're kind of there to try to trip you up. Um, they're trying to there to make sure you know, um, and you're not just guessing here, but you know the answers. So uh, as you take that, make sure you know the key terms in modules five, module six, and then the key people in module seven. Um, then that you have five multiple choice questions. Those are um, kind of came out of some of the class, um, class discussions. It comes out of the reading. Then you have a few true false. And those, uh, they're not very difficult. I know some, some teachers can make true false very, very difficult and kind of guessing. They're not there to trip you up. Um, so just read those and, and answer, is it true uh, or is it false? And then finally, 
uh, or not finally, but next you have three short answers. And on those short answers, I'm just looking for you to answer the question. Um, usually it's to give me a, a list of certain things. Um, and so you need to be able to give me those specific things. Now I do want to bring up in one of these short answers, it comes specifically from something we discussed in class. And I want to go over that real quick. And so if you're watching this video, if you took the time to sit down and watch this video, I'm about to give you an answer on your final. All right. And so the short answer question is as follows. It says in class, we talked about five things to help with biblical interpretation. What were they? All right. And then I even put a hint in there. The hint, the, the answer is not soap. Remember, if you remember back to that day, we talked about biblical interpretation. We talked about soap which stood for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. And it says, but that's not what I'm looking for. But these were five things I presented in class to help with interpretation. And those five things were context, language, resources, literary analysis, and church history. All right, those are the five things I'm looking for. Number one is context. Number two is language. Number three is resources. Number four is literary analysis, and number five is church history. So if you watch this video, there is already five points towards uh, your grade, and you will get that one 100% correct. Context, language, resources, literary analysis, and church history. All right, after that, um, after the three short answer, you do have three essay questions this time. And these essay questions... I do want you to put thought into them. I want you to, I know two of them specifically ask that you write two paragraphs to answer it. Um, and so you want to make sure you are putting the time and the thought uh, into these questions. Uh, one question you have to choose. Um, if you remember uh, in class, we had discussions over the church and politics, and we had a discussion over the church and social justice. And so simply on one of those, what you'll do is you'll choose one side or the other and you'll answer the questions. So it is, if you do that one and you give me your thoughts and thoughtfully write it out, you'll get 100% on that one. Okay. The other one, uh, one deals with uh, baptism and communion, deals with sacraments. And then the last one deals with... Um, church history okay and that one you'll have to use this book for right um, there's a there's a chapter on church history use that chapter to answer the essay question on church history now the one essay question um, on baptism and communion I want to give you a little bit of help here okay because this is again is something we talked about in class so in case you didn't take notes or forgot to take notes or you weren't there and you didn't listen uh, for whatever reason maybe you you forgot some of these things. And so what, what I want to do is for this question, the question is choose either baptism or communion and answer the following in a short essay. The first one says, A, describe the process. And this is the part I want to help you with. And then B is describe the purpose. Now you're going to have to do B on your own, describe the purpose or the meaning behind baptism and communion. But I want to help you with the process because I don't know if the book goes into... Uh, a lot of detail on what the process exactly looks like. So let me first start with baptism. I want to pull up my class notes here really quick. All right, so if we start with baptism and we go into what does the process look like, all right? If you remember when we talked in class, we the first thing I said about the process of baptism, that it is corporate. Or in other words, it is completed with other Christians to witness. It is not a private event. It's not done just between you and one other person. But instead, it is a corporate thing where, if at all possible, baptism should be kind of in front of the church or with friends and with family to witness somebody being baptized. That's the first part of the process. The second part of the process is that there is a blessing. There is a prayer over the water and the person. Um, typically, this is a pastor or priest will 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 pray this blessing. Uh, number three in the process, there is a confession of faith. Typically, the person is asked if they have repented of their sins and believe in Jesus's life, death, and resurrection. If they are committed to following Jesus and joining the church, 
So it is a confession with the person's mouth that they are a believer, that they believe in Jesus Christ. And then fourth, we have a, typically there is a congregational response where the Christians that are present are asked if they are con will continue to nurture and guide and lead this person in the Christian faith. And then finally, fifth, the person is baptized. The pastor typically has some sort of body of water, whether um, it is small and they are sprinkled, or they are poured, or they are immersed, um, all these people, uh, the person then is baptized. So that's kind of the, the, the process that I'm looking for, right? The first thing is it's corporate. There's a blessing or prayer. There's a confession of faith. There's a congregational response. And then fifth, the person is baptized. So that's kind of what a typical process of baptism looks like. Next, let's look at communion. Communion, what is the process? Let me see if I have it pulled up here. All right, what is the process? Number one is that, again, like um, baptism, it starts with a, or like baptism, it is a blessing. There's a blessing or a prayer that is typically done by a pastor or a priest who pray over the elements of wine or juice and bread. Um, so there is a, the first thing is there's a prayer or a blessing. Uh, number two, there is some sort of liturgy. Usually there are words that are said that mimic what the scriptures say. Um, and so sometimes people will talk about what Jesus did the night um, that he ate, the last supper he had with his disciples, where he kind of starts this tradition of communion, this, this process of, of doing this in remembrance of him. And so usually there are words said either by the pastor or sometimes in, um, in, in with the congregation. Um, sometimes it's a, a combined thing where, where it's like a call and response, but sometimes there's usually a liturgy that goes along that mimics some of the words and explains what communion is. And then finally, part three is that people partake, that the pastor either passes out or people get in line to take the elements and they eat and they drink, uh, they eat the bread and they drink the juice or the wine. And again, if you remember, I said that there are two main ways that people do this. It's either through intention, where they tear off a piece of bread and they, they dip it into a cup of wine or juice. Or that the other kind of way is that everyone gets an individual cup or individual wafer or piece of bread and they kind of take it on their own. And then I know in, I think most of the classes, I actually think I've forgotten one class, but the fourth thing, and you can add this if you would, if you want, but... Um, you won't miss any points if you if you don't put this. The fourth thing is that there's usually a time for prayer and reflection uh, for people that partake. That usually there is a a hymn that is saying or a, a time to reflect and to pray um, after taking communion. And that's really what the process looks like. So one, there is a blessing or a prayer over the elements. Two, there is some kind of liturgy word spoken to explain communion. And then three, people partake. And then the kind of the bonus, the fourth one, is there's a time for reflection and prayer, either through music or a quiet time for people to pray. So that is kind of what the process looks for both. You're able to choose either one. And so uh, I encourage you, use your resources, use your notes. Uh, you can do this. Uh, this is 15% of your grade, so make sure you do a good job. Make sure you get it turned in. The last thing I want to tell you is that this you can this um, this exam is open from Sunday, November fifteenth until November Tuesday, November twenty fourth. You can take it whenever you want. I don't care, but just know if you take it after the twenty fourth, it's going to be a zero. Okay, I have to. It has to be done by the twenty fourth. Okay, I don't even know if it'll let you if you try to take. I don't even know if it'll let you take it after the twenty fourth. Um, but just know, if you don't get it done by the 24th, it will be a zero. So make sure you, you carve out time, uh, you get this done. If you want to do it sooner than later, I encourage you, please do that. All right. Well, good luck on your test. I am uh, praying for you all. I hope you all have a great finals week. And thank you for being so great this semester. Bye.